I got these queens right here from Corey Stevens out of Missouri. He raises VSH queens, uh, mite resistant bees. And so I never really introduced uh, virgin queens to my colleagues before, so we're gonna give it a try. I came in here Saturday and broke out 12 splits. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and introduce these queens and see how this process goes. And I'll walk you through the process. When I brought these splits out Saturday, I took them out of those colonies up there on the hill. And it was really quick and easy. In each of these colonies, I have at least one frame of brood and one frame of food. I filled in the rest with either new frames, a foundation, or there may be some drawn comb in here as well. I also fed the bees uh, with a mixture of one-to-one -one, uh, sugar syrup, I don't know, maybe to help keep them calm and help them grow if they need to build some wax or whatever. Let's see how Corey ships his queens. Ships in these little cages. There's 12 here, there's a dozen. And he puts the queens in here. There's a queen in here with some candy in the end, and uh, there's some attendants in there as well. I brought these splits out Saturday, which was three days ago. Today's Tuesday. And I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape over this so they don't release her too soon. The way Corey likes to do is give them a plenty of time to make sure they don't have any ability to make a new queen on their own. And so if you give them a week or so, I think seven to eight days before they actually release the queen, there's no way that they can make their own queen and they won't, and she'll have a much better chance of success. So I got some green duct tape is what we found at the house. I'm just going to tape it over the end. And this will allow the bees in here to get used to her. And then I'll come out probably Friday or Saturday and take the tape off. They'll eat through the candy and by the time they release her then they'll be uh, ready to go and get her mated. All right, so we don't have massive splits here. So you just got about a frame of bees in there right now, honestly. But there is a frame of brood in here as well. Smoke them down a little bit. Let's see, we got room for them to grow. We got a frame of foundation right there. Frame that has some brood in it, right there. And there's another frame. The other one has some brood in it too and some food. And so I'm just gonna take this cage, just put it about right here. And now when I come back in here Friday or Saturday, I'm gonna break out any cells they're making. There's a couple right here. I guess I could just go ahead and break them out. You really don't have to do that until right before to right the end, because they still, te theoretically, if there were some eggs in here on Saturday, they still theoretically could make some more queens, and so we'll just take care of whatever we find the day I pull the tape off. And put them back in here like this. Put the frame back in. Just go ahead and put some more food on them. Just feel like that'll help them keep them happy we are coming into a flow here but uh, this is some sugar syrup it actually has hive alive um, supplement in it I'm kind of a believer in those hive alive products i think they do good the fondant has really helped me a lot and i've used a little bit of this syrup supplement as well okay these bees have not eaten a whole lot of the sugar water on top but i see in this one there's more food in here so Actually, there is some syrup or nectar or something all through here. So they're putting something in there. They haven't eaten much of the sugar water, so plenty of brood in this one. Just like this. I like to have the tube facing up where the queen's gonna escape because if some of the attendants die in here and it's facing down, they could block that exit. So I like to have it facing up and just kind of, kind of push it in, press it into some of the brood like this right here like that and that kind of holds them in place and then we'll just put it in here and gently press it against the next frame over that's two down ten to go Let's see if they jump on here not really interested in her yet interesting what on earth girls not a lot of bees in here I hope they're not, not just robber bees yeah I don't know if this is even a viable colony we'll find out I guess
Okay, this is the last one of this Apame here. So now we're going to get out of here. I'll come back in a few days, probably Friday or Saturday, and take the tape off and just see how they're doing then. It's been three days since we uh, dropped the queens in these little nukes behind me here. I pulled these splits out actually six days ago. So the idea is we'll remove the tape today, make sure any cells aren't broken down that are in these nukes, and then that the bees release the queens and let them get mated. Well, I'm concerned it did get a little bit chilly a couple of nights, so I hope we don't have an issue with chilled brood. I've been a little concerned about that, but let's just see what we have. This actually looks like a nice little split here. You can see the, the bees are good. There are probably more in here now. Some of that breed might be emerging just as I had hoped. They do seem very calm, so I think this one's gonna be a success. Not a ton of bees in here, but you don't need a lot of bees to get these little queens mated. So not really doing a whole lot. They're just kind of cleaning up some of this comb right here. This is an old frame. Apparently we use this one to harvest honey out of. They've got this side cleaned up. You can see here where we used our Simple Harmony Farms uh, uncapper to slice the stuff on that, but they're cleaning this side up right here, making it all even and smooth. Yeah, there's plenty of bees in here, so I don't think there's gonna be an issue on this one. So there we got plenty of bees. They're actually putting some nectar or some sugar water in their cells here. So all I'm gonna do is simply uh, take this right here, look over the frame really well. I see some cells right here. The queen cells have been developed right here. We're gonna smash all these queen cells down because if they make their own, then there's a pretty good chance they won't accept this little queen. So we're gonna mash them, make sure we don't have any viable queen cells. Anything that's even questionable, I'm gonna destroy. I believe they can make queens out of larvae newly hatched on day three on up to about day five or six. And so you gotta make sure, that's one reason we wait a little while on these. That's one thing that Corey recommends you do, is to make sure they don't have any chance at all to make their own queens. So let me just kind of check here. No queen cells at all. We do have, still have the queen in there. She's still walking around. So I'm gonna take this tape off. And that's gonna allow these bees to actually go in there and release her now. Make sure it's secure right there and the bees can get to the candy plug. And then we're just gonna stick it back down in there. I'm gonna check this frame, make sure we don't have any cells on it. Really not seeing any issues with any more queen cells being developed on here. I think we're in perfect shape on this. So we're just gonna close it up now and let them do their thing. There's the queen. I'm really not seeing any queen cells on here. I did destroy a few on some of these the other night, but didn't spend a lot of time looking for them. Maybe we didn't have any eggs really in this one when I moved it over. Get the tape off of here. See the candy in there? Now they can eat through the candy because I'm removing the tape. One thing I, I failed to mention the other night, I came back and checked them all, but if you've got a top feeder like these, these uh, jar feeders, you put the queen in here, I would recommend not putting her right below that water feeder. I think I might have had her right here, which was beneath the water feeder. I moved it over a little bit. I thought about that after the fact and just want to make sure that the sugar syrup's not dripping down on them anyway or there's no risk of that. But So we got the, the uh, candy opening right there exposed to the bees. They can take care of that and drop her down it. We got to check one more frame real quick. So there's a little bit of brood on that next frame over. This was a really strong split actually, looks like, stronger than some. We've definitely had some bees, I think, emerge in here. There's more bees in here than I'm sure I transferred over. Touch them, you can gently touch the bees and they kind of move out of the way. You can touch them or blow on them. I'm not seeing any queen cells. Just gonna close them up and leave them alone. See what happens. Went ahead and removed the tape on these 12 splits and they look pretty good actually, most of them do. This one right here was a little weak, but there are bees in there, hopefully they'll do okay. This one right up here though was uh, really kind of suffering. The queen was still alive in there, but there just weren't many bees, there was a fair amount of brood. This is the one I was really a little bit concerned about, maybe the brood being chilled in, but I actually saw, I think, a little bee emerging in there. So I actually took a, a frame out of the really super strong split I made and put it in here. And then I just dumped some more bees, uh, probably nurse bees from a, a strong colony over here just to see how it does. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but I thought, hey, it's worth a try. Now we got some bees in here. Um, so I just took a couple frames of brood, 
bumped them on the ground in front of here and they ran in. But this apame up here, and when I taped up the queen cage, I didn't tape it up very well and they have released the queen in here. I didn't see her anywhere. Maybe she's out on a mating fight. It's just afternoon. Now we just gotta wait uh, two or three weeks and see what happens. Uh, let them release those queens, let them get mated and then come back and check out the results. It's May 12th and it's been a couple of weeks since I pulled the tape off of these queen cages. Let's get into some of these little nukes and see what we find. All right, here we go. These seem pretty calm. Hope we see some eggs and some, maybe even a little bit of larva or brood in here. Let's see what we got. Uh, they're putting some nectar in here. Bees seem really calm though. We got eggs in here. <laughs> All right, so we're successful. We even have a little bit of larva through here. Pull it in here, see if you can see it. I don't know if you can or not. So we got us a successfully mated queen in this one looks like. I was gonna buy a different colored marker for Corey's queens and I forgot to go by Walmart and get one. We got some a fairly well developed larvae in there. We got some bees with some pollen in their pockets and here's the queen right here. She's a pretty one. She looks really good. Mated and doing her thing. All right, Corey, first nuke I went into, we got a beautifully mated queen here. Uh, she looks like she's happy. She's filling it up with eggs. Now this is two weeks from when I removed the tape from the cage. And there she is right there. Take the cage off. And we're just gonna let these girls keep working. How about that? It's always fun when a plan comes together. I think we're finally hitting a flow at just the right time for this hive to really kind of take off and do well. Excited about that. Very similar. This splits a little stronger, I think. More bees in here. These bees are drawing out this frame that I put in there and putting nectar in it. So we got a flow going, it looks like, finally. Let's see if we can find Corey Stevens queen number two. Oh yeah, we got eggs. Looks like we're gonna be two for two. We even have brood in this one. She must have gotten mated uh, very quickly. I've never introduced virgin queens like this before, so it's kind of fun to see the success. Man, look at all that larva in there, a little bit of brood. There eggs everywhere. So she, oh, there she is right there, another beautiful queen, wow. See her right here? Wow, Corey, good job. Beautiful queen, beautiful mama. One of Corey's rugged Missouri mite maulers combined with some Alabama drones. Be interesting to see how they do. I think I'm gonna close this thing up and drive over to Walmart. It's not very far from here. Ozark Walmart, see if I can find a marker. I wanna mark these. I'm probably gonna mark them a, a unique color like orange or purple or something, just something different. So I know they're Corey's queens if I start moving these bees around a little bit to different locations. So I'm gonna make a quick trip to Walmart. I'll be right back. I went to Walmart, got my orange marker. I feel like orange is a good color to be able to distinguish Corys from other queens. There she goes. I got an orange dot on her. So I can tell it's Corys. Uh, the color for this year in 2023 is red, but this orange is a pretty bright color. I've already marked the first couple we went through. And let's peek in on this one and see what we got. This is the third one. There she is. She's right there. Queen's right there. Another pretty queen. Touch this here first so I don't douse her wings and everything. There she is. Just gonna release her and let her go to work. Isn't she pretty? 
she's filling it up with eggs. So I'm gonna lower this down here with plenty of space between the frame that she's on so we don't roll her, which means to kill her. And I'm gonna gently slide this forward like this, put this frame in, put the lid on and we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the rest of these 12 splits. That's three for three. Fun stuff, I'm glad to see these queens made it and doing well. This one might be a no-go. First one, don't see an obvious queen in here. So for some reason, this one didn't work out. So we're four for five. Yeah, we're gonna have to put a frame of brood or, or else combine these with another hive. That's how it goes sometimes. So, yep, four for five. Yep, hate to see that, but it happens. Five for six. Oh yeah. Yeah, it didn't make it, I think. I just didn't set them up very good. I suspect that this was gonna happen. I've got another one with a similar situation that I've already checked. It looks a lot like this. I think I put a stick on this one because I knew it was a little weak as well. Let's see if we have bees in here. Oh yeah, we got some bees. Yeah, not looking real good. Don't think we have a successful one here either. Don't see any eggs. Let me walk off a little bit and just see. They seem pretty calm. Yeah, I don't think we have a good result here. Not a lot going on here. I might drop a frame of a lot of brood and some more bees in here and just see if they'll make them another queen. Wonky comb. I hate that, but we'll just have to scrape it off and let them redo it, maybe. There's the queen right here. I'm actually gonna drop her down here. We're six for nine. Let's pick it on this app in May. This is one that uh, when I when it was removing tape a couple of weeks ago, I had not taped this one up very good and they'd already released the queen. Uh, so I just didn't even, I just kind of closed it up and didn't even look for it really. I had just, when I put the tape over the candy, it was kind of folded. So uh, they figured out how to get in there and release her. Yeah, we got larva and eggs. Looks like we got us a queen. Let's find her. Oh man, she's a pretty one. There's a big fat one right here. It's really looking good. It is fun when a plan comes together. Beautiful queen. Hey, if you're still with me, I want to do a quick review and give you a little follow-up on one of the ones that, that, was, that we thought was queenless down there. So three weeks ago, tomorrow, which was April 22nd, I pulled 12 splits from these columns behind me and put it out there in the woods to be uh, prepared for these splits, for these new queens. Then three days after that, I put uh, Corey's queens, little virgin queens in the queen cages in those splits and, and I put tape over the end so they couldn't escape. Three days after that, which was a Friday, I came out here and uh, broke down any queen cells that were in there and pulled the tape off so these queens could be released and get mated. And here we are two weeks later. You know, you saw the results, they're doing pretty well. I'm gonna do a quick follow-up though. 
I went down and checked those two that, that, were, that appeared to be queenless to see how they were doing. Uh, one of them looked, ha had seemed happy and was doing well. And so I just wanted to see what was going on. I found a queen in there, but she was, a, I think, a virgin queen still. She was missing a wing. So obviously she was unable to go get mated and come back. So I went ahead and pinched her and put a frame of eggs brood, you know, the young larvae in there from another one of Corey's queens that had started laying. So we'll have a second generation Stevens queen out here, uh, hopefully pretty quickly, if they uh, make a new queen and she gets mated. The other one, I don't know, for some reason, just was, just was not a take. Uh, the queen didn't get mated for whatever reason. And then two of them were doomed to fail from the beginning. Beekeeper error, I just did something wrong with the splits. So overall, eight for 12. Um, I did pull a frame of eggs and brood from another colony and just stick it in there in the one that, was, that, that didn't take. And so maybe they'll make a queen, maybe they won't. We'll see what happens. So what do y'all think? Leave me a comment down below. It's been kind of a fun experiment. And I'm excited to see how Corey's Missouri mite maulers do combined with these Alabama bees around here, uh, whatever it is out here in these woods. I don't claim to have any type of genetics. It's just a mix of all, a lot of things. So before we close, I want you to know I do appreciate y'all being a part of this community. I do put a lot of work into these videos, and, uh, but I do enjoy it. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. And I enjoy being, getting to know all you guys, the comments you give me, especially the constructive ones or the positive ones. I'm all about constructive criticism. If you got an idea of something that'll work better, just let me know. On Valentine's Day, I made an early risky split down in Slocum, and it's been an interesting story to follow. Here's a link to that video. You can go watch it here, and then of course go watch the follow-up videos on my channel. Y'all take care, be safe, and we'll catch you on the next one.